probably wondering why I'm putting on this costume. It's because of what happened this morning. A few weeks ago, our neighborhood got a new ice cream man. Only this ice cream man was an ice cream woman. Her name was Olga, and she wasn't all that happy about her job. There were three reasons. One was that the kids on her route could be a little cruel. Here you are, a nice ice cream cone for each of you. <laughs> Don't eat too much of that or you'll wind up looking like her. Another reason was that uh, she had a little problem on her roof. <laughs> that problem, of course, was me. <laughs> Again, that cat. And it was a recurring problem. Every day when she showed up, I showed up. was getting a little nippy in here. <laughs> so that was the other reason Olga was very unhappy in her job. Oh, there was one other. It said Olga was, well, kind of lonely. You know, you don't meet a lot of ideal men when you drive an ice cream huh? truck. Hey, let me have a triple dip cone. Uh, boysenberry, fish ripple, and tofu sherbet. Coming right up. Hey, Olga, you've put on a couple more pounds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I got home, Odie was watching TV. They're coming to you live from Pier 16, where museum manager Esmeralda Brubaker has just returned from an exciting expedition. Is that so? Indeed it is. The museum has just acquired this. It's a block of ice from the continental shelf in the eastern part of Greenland. It is said to contain the frozen remains of a primitive man. A caveman frozen in a block of ice? Can you thaw him out in a microwave? Uh, this is science, miss. We hope to learn more about history by defrosting the body. We'll transport it to the museum and begin the process. I brought back some ice cream bars. Want one? <laughs> <laughs> Here, you can have whatever's left. Hey, the stick's the best part. You like to chase him, don't you? Okay, you're right. That was rotten even for me. If Olga's still around, I'll get you an ice cream with ice cream on it. And maybe nine more for myself. <laughs> All Olga was thinking about that day was how long before I can get off work and go home to my crummy little apartment huh? alone. Oh. <laughs> hey. Uh oh, locked. Ah, there's a switch in the driver's compartment that unlocks it. Oh. That's it, right there. And that was when I accidentally fell on the parking brake. Whoops! Stop! Don't go anywhere. No one's driving. No! Stop! I don't even have a cat's license. Maybe this button stops me. Maybe this one. That button didn't stop it either. 
And I didn't realize it at the time, but that was the button to turn off the refrigerator in the back. What should I do? What should I do? manual that came with the truck. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Ah, here it is. Stop it. Step on the brake. I'm out of danger. I think it would have been safer to drive off the pier. It's not enough you steal my ice cream. Now you steal my ice cream truck! Myra, you think this crate really has a frozen caveman in it? Eh, who knows? All we're supposed to do is load it into the refrigerated truck when it gets here. Hey! That must be it. You bad kitty cat! Bad! And it was about then that a weird thought came over me. I started to feel sorry for Olga. Started to feel I hadn't been too nice to her. Yes, me. Yes, I feel sorry for people once in a while. Now here, get in your costume. So where was I? Oh, yeah. So I'm guessing that's what these guys did. Are you sure this is the right truck, Myron? This is for ice cream. The museum must be saving money. Olga must have returned to her truck and driven off, totally unaware of two things. One was that she had a frozen caveman in the back on top of the cherry vanilla, and the other thing was that all the ice cream in the truck was melting. <gasps> That's right, because I'd accidentally turned off the refrigerator. Glad you're paying attention. So all the ice cream was melting, and so was the block of ice. Meanwhile, back at the pier. How could you put my caveman into an ice cream truck? Uh, you said the refrigerator truck. <laughs> that was a refrigerator truck. I'm going to chase down that ice cream truck and get my property back. I didn't know what was going on, but it sounded like Olga might be in trouble. So I decided to hitch a ride and see if I could go help. And anyway, it beats walking. As it turned out, she did need help. There's been this guy hanging around the neighborhood lately. Kind of a shady looking guy. He flagged her down. I want some ice cream, but uh, do you have change for a 20? I'm pretty sure that I do. Ah! Give that back! That is mine! <laughs> well, that is mine now! <laughs> she screamed, but nobody heard. <laughs> well, almost nobody. You cannot just take my money. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, who's gonna stop me? <laughs> You came to my rescue. And right there in the street, the caveman looked at Olga. He hadn't seen a woman in, oh, a few thousand years. So to him, she looked pretty good. Ooh, woman. And she'd never seen a man look at her and think she was beautiful before. So to her, he looked pretty good. the little kids in the neighborhood can see it. You think she's beautiful? Uh, pretty, pretty. There he is. There's my caveman. Everybody could see the two of them were in love. Everyone except the lady from the museum. That caveman is museum property. He has to come with me. But we just found each other. These two oh. lovebirds need a chance to be together. Fortunately, they had me there. And fortunately, I know the smell of ice cream, even the melting kind. 
<laughs> you can't take him from me. Yeah. He's coming back to the museum to be studied and put on display. <clears throat> what is it, Cat? Better take a look in the back. You want me to look in the back of that truck? Well, what could be in there that could possibly matter to... <laughs> this is your chance, kids. Go far from her and her museum. <laughs> so they ran off. And well, nobody knows where they are, but I'll bet they're happy together. Oh. Get me out of this! Hmm. Don't worry. I'll have you out and you know, I say I bought 600 spoonfuls. And what will I do with the museum? I, I promised my supervisors a caveman exhibit. Well, if you leave the happy couple alone, I can help you out for a while. And so that's why we have to do this. You up for it? Okay, let's go to work. And right this way, we have our new exhibit from Stone Age Life. These figures represent a primitive cat and a saber-toothed Odie dog. Remember, Odie, we're just filling in until they find another caveman. Yeah. Okay, lunchtime. Mm. Hope it takes them a while. Mm, the food here is pretty darn good. while I'm away. Don't eat all the ribs while I'm away. <laughs> Did he really think I'd eat all the ribs while he was away? <sighs> what should I do now? I think I'll eat all the ribs while he's away. Mmm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> oh, it's you. You hungry, Puppo? Yeah. Fine, I'll give you the part I can't eat. That's the best thing about dogs. They're happy with stuff that no one else would want to eat. Oh. A bone. A juicy, delicious bone. Hey, Odie, look at that mockingbird. He's mocking you. Another bone? How could you have finished the first one? No, I'm not giving you another bone. If you want a bone, go dig up one of yours that you've buried out in the garden over the years. The best part of eating ribs? Mm, licking your paws. Oh. 
So you found a big bone. Big deal, don't bother me. So it's the biggest bone you ever saw? Don't, I repeat, bother me. Oh, all right, all right, I'll look at it. Oh, if it only had meat on it. Bodie, you know what this is? But not just any big bone. Come on. That's a dinosaur bone. Those are worth a lot of money. This is the website for the town's natural history museum. Watch. Here at the museum, we are especially proud of our dinosaur skeletons. Recently, we located this one. It's a Tyrannosaurus rex from the Cretaceous period. This skeleton is valued at more than a quarter of a million dollars. A quarter of a million dollars? Hootie, I'm rich. Do you know how much lasagna you can buy for a quarter of a million dollars? Enough to feed me. I'm gonna take that bone down to the museum and find that lady. You go dig up the rest of the skeleton. We found this skeleton in someone's backyard on the west side of town. We had to get a court order to have the people who live there evicted and their home torn down, but we did it all in the name of silence. Odie, get back to work. Have that skeleton dug up by the time I get back. Barontosaurus, also known as Apatosaurus, lived 150 million years ago and weighed a minimum of 23 metric tons. 23 metric tons? That's more than I weigh after a good Italian dinner. Okay, I gotta find that lady who'll pay me a fortune for the bones that he's digging up. Oh. Oh, no. Hey, cat, you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, and first, you put that bone down. That's museum property. Oh, no, 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 no. I brought this bone with me. It's going to make me rich. I'm trapped. There's no way out of here. Okay, I've got him cornered in the Tyrannosaurus Rex exhibit. He can't possibly get away. Congratulations, you're now an exhibit. The first security guard to be swallowed by a Tyrannosaurus. Ah, ah, help! Ah! Marin, a cat stole a bone and is heading down corridor 11 with it. Where's that lady who pays the big bucks for dino bones? Sorry, cat. Our dinosaur bones are not to-go orders. But I brought this one with me. Odie found it in the garden. Hey, I recognize you. You live with that Arbuckle guy on my block. What seems to be the trouble, Myron? No trouble, Mrs. Brubaker. This cat tried to steal this dinosaur bone. I don't recognize this bone from any of our exhibits. It's... it's from a Brachiosaurus. A Brachiohoosus? This is one of the rarest dinosaurs in the world. We don't have one in our collection. Cat, did you find this where you live? I'll take the money in small bills, uh, mostly hundreds. We must have an immediate excavation to find every possible bone on the property. 
we'll get a court order to tear down any buildings or dwellings. Tear down? You mean, you just tear down this Arbuckle guy's home? Science is more important than anyone's individual life. Our house? I won't let you. The cat's getting away. Levin, you seem to know where the property is. Let's go. Myron? Myron, can you hear me? Did somebody come and get me out of this? Somebody? Anybody? I have to get rid of those bones or they'll tear down our house. dug up an entire dinosaur. Uh -huh. You did as I asked, boy, and that's great. There's just one more thing I want you to do for me. Uh. Bury them all again. No! No, there's no time. This is awful. I should have given you that second rib bone you asked for instead of sending you out to dig here. Uh. What do you mean you never got to even enjoy the first one? I gave it to you. Uh. <coughs> What? Hercules stole it? That little sawed-off chihuahua down the block? Mm-hmm. This could work out just fine. Oh, yes. Hey, what's haps there, Hercules? Did you come to take the bone back? I'm not giving it to you. I stole it fair and squares. Oh, no, you can keep it. Audie doesn't bother with those tiny bones anymore. This is not a tiny bone. It is a good-sized bone. Oh, you think so, huh? Come on. Take a look at the kind of bone Odie's been digging up at our place. Oh! <laughs> you can keep any of those tiny bones you come across. Who needs them? Well, I have to take Odie for a walk, so I hope nobody steals his new bones while we're gone. <gasps> can it be? It's true. It's true! The largest, most beautiful bones I've ever seen! I don't care how many trips I have to make, these bones will be all mine! Hold on, hold on! I just got home this minute. What is it you want to do? It's what we are going to do. We're having your home declared a site of vital scientific interest. We're going to tear down the whole house and dig for dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones? There are no dinosaur bones here. There are. Your cat had one. Want to see where the dinosaur bones are? You want us to follow you, cat? <laughs> there are your dino bones, lady. My word! Those are Brachiosaurus bones. Forget about Mr. Arbuckle's property. Let's tear this house down and dig. I don't know how you do it, Garfield. I don't know how I do it either. Come on, boy. Let's get home and see if there are any ribs left. You can have the bone, and I'll take all the meat stuff they stick on the outside. <laughs> Garfield, we were supposed to share that pizza. 
Don't worry, I'll leave you the crest. Come back with that pillow. It's my pillow, I paid for it. Yeah, but I'm the one who's got cat hair all over it. A mouse! Garfield, there's a mouse in the kitchen. You were supposed to do something to keep mice out. I am. I'm eating every last piece of cheese we have. Boy, John and Garfield haven't been getting along well lately, have they? And you'd like them to be friends, wouldn't you? Well, we gotta do something. I can't live in a house with so much bickering. I'm a sensitive rodent. And I think I got an idea. Wanna help, Odie? No, no. Okay, here's what I need you to do. But I gotta whisper something. We're going to watch the music show. We're going to watch the monster movie. We're going to watch the music show. We're going to watch the monster movie. We're going to watch the music show. We're going to watch the monster movie. We're going to watch the music show. Monster movie. We're going to watch the movie show. Monster movie. Movie show. Monster movie. Movie show. Monster movie. We're going to watch the music show. We're going to watch the monster movie. We're going to watch the music show. We're going to watch the monster movie. We're going to watch the movie show. Monster movie. Are you and your pet not getting Monster along? Movie show. Are the two Monster of you movie. always Monster quarreling movie. and Monster bickering? Movie. If Monster the movie. arguments Monster in your house movie. are getting out Monster of hand, movie. maybe you're Monster just movie. what we've Monster been movie. looking Monster for. Monster movie. Monster movie. Monster show. Monster movie. Huh? We have a new reality TV show called Pet Matchers. Our mission is to match the right pet and master. Each week, we put one pet owner and one pet through a series of tests calculated to measure if they go together. Last week, this woman came to us with her dog, an obvious mismatch. After our tests, she left with her new perfectly matched pet. Gee, that, that sounds, sounds interesting. interesting. Maybe we ought to go on that show. They'll get tested, they'll realize they're made for each other, and no more arguing. That is, if it works. Pet Matchers with your host, Chuck Yenta. Welcome back. We're testing this man, John Arbinkle. John Arbuckle. Right, John Arbinkle, to see if he and his cat Garfield are a good match. <sighs> I hope they don't expect me to sing. The computer has analyzed your likes. Here are yours, John Arbinkle. <clears throat> Summer days, friendly people, walks on the beach, a good baseball game. Yep, that's me. And here is what the computer has determined as the likes of your pet. Beef lasagna, sausage lasagna, spinach lasagna, more beef lasagna. Did it mention lasagna? Smart computer. Let's see the other ways in which you two are compatible or incompatible. Favorite way to spend the evening? Favorite sport? Favorite hobby? Oh, how this testing is making me feel like I need a nap. Mr. Yanta, have these tests enabled you to determine my personality? Yes! You don't seem to have one. But we have determined that you and your cat Garfield are... Incompatible! Incompatible? You mean Garfield shouldn't be my cat? That is correct. But don't worry, we've determined the ideal new pet for you and the ideal new master for your cat. Hmm? There was someone other than John? Garfield Cat, your new owner is... Freddy Applegate, age nine. Where's my new kitty cat? I want my new kitty cat. Oh, oh, oh my. But Garfield and I have always... And John Arbinkle, the ideal new pet for you, as determined by the computer, is... This floor! Are you sure the computer didn't make a mistake? Computers never make mistakes. 
Now, you go to your homes and we'll have camera crews follow you and report back on next week's show how things are working out. I already hate this. I'm gonna take you home and we're gonna play rocket the ride! No. Don't be sad, Odie. Our new friend will fit right into our lives and it will all be good. There you go, boy. I think that's all he does. Look at the bright side. I'll bet Garfield's getting along great in his new home. Kitty cat! It's time for lunch! Did someone say lunch? You did say lunch. Oh boy, I'm gonna like it here. For lunch, I'm having meatloaf with mashed potatoes and cream corn floss. For dessert, I get ice cream with hot fudge on it. But what about the cat? What about the cat? And you get a nice big bowl of kitty crunchies. Yuck. Hey, if you think this is food, you eat it. Oh. You're my cat, and you're gonna do what I tell you. We're gonna play Rocket to Mars. We are? Oh, I don't think I'm gonna like playing Rocket to Mars. Get me the blast off for Mars. Three, two, one, blast off! I was right, I don't like playing Rocket to Mars. Like it one bit. So, Froggy, would you like to go for a walk? Chase birds? Do anything? How about kicking the puppy off the table? My old pet loved kicking the puppy off the table. This is the most boring pet in the world. I'll bet things are more exciting in Garfield's new home. Now he wants to play cops and robbers, and I have to be a robber. Oh, where is that bad kitty cat burglar? <gasps> oh, no! I'm going to have to arrest him and make sure he receives the ultimate punishment. This is the ultimate punishment. Maybe he's hiding in here somewhere. Ooh, when I catch him, he'll be sorry. I'm already sorry. No, I guess he's not in here. I'll go search around outside. <gasps> Boy, am I sorry. Gotcha! But not as sorry as I'm gonna be. The burglar's putting up a struggle. He's trying to get away. A fine idea. He's making a break for his getaway car! I am? It looks like it's going to be a high-speed uh. police pursuit! She made me lasagna. Yeah! I, I can't move. I can't move. Where's my kitty cat? I have another game for him. Oh, yeah. I can move. I've got to get Garfield back in my life. I've got to get John back in my life. <laughs> Garfield, you should come back and be my loyal, devoted cat again. John, I should come back and you should be the guy who feeds me again. <sighs> hey. <laughs> well, that's what our cameras recorded. I guess this pet match just didn't work. 
but things have all been straightened out. Garfield and John are together again. And Freddy has a new pet, too. We're gonna say Rocket to Mars! Ah! Hey, you come back here! Get my frog now! And meanwhile, here's your faithful dog, Odie. Glad to see Master and Pet reunited. And to thank you for letting pet matchers try to match your pets, we have a nice gift for you. Something edible, I hope. Our computer has calculated what would be the ideal vacation spot for you. And we're going to send you there all expenses paid. The perfect vacation spot? I can't wait. <laughs> the, the, the per per perfect vacation spot? I thought the computers didn't make mistakes. <laughs> Computers don't make mistakes. Pets make mistakes. Country air, boys. Wasn't it a great idea to go spend a week with my brother on the farm? No. Isn't it good to get away from the TV? No. And won't it be great to get up at the crack of dawn, work in the fields, and do chores? No, no, and no. And in that order. Yeah. Seven days with no TV, no pizza delivery, and John calling his brother a name he doesn't like. Don't call me Duck Boy. Don't call me Doc Boy. Don't call me Doc Boy. Don't call me Doc Boy. Doc Boy, Doc Boy, Doc Boy. Told you. You like working here on the farm, John. It's a very efficient operation. That's my farmhand, Ralph. How's it going, Ralph? Fine, Mr. Arbuckle. I'm just about to go commence the milking the cows. Later on, Ralph will collect the eggs that my chickens have laid today. They are all very productive. Sure looks that way, Doc Boy. Don't call me Doc Boy. <clears throat> and later, he or I will milk the cows. I sell the milk, the eggs, the crops at the local farmer's market. It's going to be fun to work here, Doc Boy. Don't call me Doc Boy. <laughs> <laughs> You are way too happy to be here, Odie. I'm going to start the milking, Mr. Arbuckle, but I wanted to ask you about something. We got this ad here. It says, high-definition cable TV, 250 channels of movies, sports, music, programs like Super Millionaire Name That Fish, and... Forget about it. We've decided not to have TV on this farm. No TV? That's inhumane. Well, there are some good things on TV. Maybe, but we took a vote. I let all the animals vote, and we all decided no TV on this farm. Do you want TV here, ladies? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what do a bunch of cows know? Just thought I'd ask. It's settled. No TV on this farm. Come on, John. You can go with me into town to pick up the supply. Fine with me, Doc Boy. Garfield, you and Odie can do the chores while we're gone. I made up a short list. Chores? Is that anything like work? Oh, and before I forget, John... 
Don't call me Doc Boy. Doc Boy, Doc Boy, Doc Boy. Whew. We have an awful lot of things to do, Ode. We better get to work. First off, there's raking the leaves. Then we gotta wash the windows in the barn. Then we have to pile up the firewood. Missed a spot. Gee, all my favorite shows are on and I'm missing them. I know, I know, they voted. Well then, we'll just have to demand a recount. You know, Chad's. This here's how you get mail. Wouldn't it be easier to just go down to the supermarket to have a whole refrigerator case of this stuff? That's about if you give it a try, cat. Now, this is a strange way to get milk. Excuse the claws, ma'am. Yeah! <sighs> Boy, you think that's funny, do you? just bored because there's no TV to watch on this farm. TV? What's so great about TV? What's so great? You can see the world without having to actually get up and do something. Look at all these great channels, like the All Hopscotch Network. And over here is special programming for cows. A cooking show with recipes for the most delicious cud you ever chewed. Oh, tell me more. Oh, everything on TV is so great. Do you really think we'll get TV out here soon? I'm working on it. Next up, we have to convince the chickens, then the horses. <laughs> we must be getting close to your farm, Doc Boy. We are. And don't call me Doc Boy. Doc Boy, Doc Boy, Doc Boy. Hey, that truck's from the cable TV company. I thought you weren't going to order it. That's what I thought, too. All hooked up, sir. I didn't order cable TV. Your farmhand did. He called, I rushed straight out here. Got here before the pizza delivery guy. Pizza? Buongiorno! I came all the way from the city, many miles, to bring you Vito's fine pies, as ordered, Doc Boy. I've got to get to the bottom of this. Don't you call me Doc Boy, either. So the secret of good chewable cud is to start with the top grade grass and weeds. Avoid, you know, burrs, their stickers at all costs. What are you all doing? You should be giving milk. Shh. My cows aren't giving milk. But it's okay. My chickens have been laying lots of eggs lately. <laughs> How's the egg production going? <laughs> More chickens aren't laying eggs. Huh? But at least my horses aren't lying around watching TV and eating pizza. How much do you want to bet? doing any work at all. I have to find out who's responsible for this. I have a feeling I know. And now, Mrs. Edna Flerp, 
for one million dollars. Can you name that fish? Looks like Herbert to me. You know, this living on a farm isn't so bad now. My cows are watching TV and eating pizza. My chickens are watching TV and eating pizza. Even my horses are watching TV and eating pizza. And do you know what they said to me? Shh. I'm ruined. My farm will be out of business. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. I poured my life into this farm and... Doc? You call me Doc. Yeah, I guess I did. Here comes the mushy part. Do you know how long it's been since you called me Doc instead of Doc Boy? A while? Uh... Oh. I'm sorry, Mrs. Flirp. The name of the fish you couldn't identify was Herbert. <laughs> Told you. And now we're dialing a phone number selected completely at random to see if some lucky viewer at home can name this fish. It's a freshwater silver-crusted mango trout. <laughs> I know my fish. Can name this fish. He or she will win $100,000. Oh. <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. The odds are like a zillion to one against him calling here. And again. Hello. Sir, are you watching Name That Fish? I know. I don't watch TV. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, I guess I'm watching. Super! Then for $100,000, can you name that fish? Sure, freshwater silver crusted mango trout. Why? That is correct! That is absolutely correct! You win $100,000! Doc, are you okay? I'm right sorry about ruining your farm the way I did, sir. Who needs farming? I'm rich! I'm rich! I'm sort of rich. I'm rich enough. Follow that man, Odie. He's rich! He's rich! He's sort of rich. Big screen TV, all the pizza, paid vacations for your animals? Your prize money will eventually run out. So when it runs out, I'll go back to farming. By that time, everything will be in reruns anyway. Mmm, good pizza do you have out here. Mmm, mmm. Okay. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 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 